All right. Welcome back to episode two of the Jackson Larian's book podcast. Podcast. Today we'll be talking about the author's influence and perspective on the book Killing Mr. Griffin by Lois Duncan. As I just stated, the author of this book is Lois Duncan. She was born April 28, 1934 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She started writing at a very young age, and she found her dream and passion. She submitted her first story in a magazine at the age of just 10 years old. She continued to work after that, and she sold her first piece of writing at the age of just 13 years old. Um, a quote from Lois Duncan about her younger years of writing is, I could hardly wait to rush home from school each day to fling myself at the typewriter. From the quote right there, you can clearly tell that she had a passion to write. She officially started her writing career her senior year, winning a contest and getting her first book co contract. In this contest, she had to write a book against other seniors and see who has the best book. In her book, the judges saw that there's alcohol involved, and they told her to change this alcohol part to a soda pop. That's all she had to do to get first place in this book contest. And after that, she got a contract. During her college days, she moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico to teach magazine writing for the journalism department at the University of New Mexico. Many of her class of stories appeared in magazines. In fact, there are over 50 stories that appeared in the magazines local to the University of New Mexico. Now, she is the author of over 50 total books. Her most famous one of all, I Know What You Did Last Summer, is a bestseller. And actually, the next book she wrote after that is the book I read, Killing Mr. Griffin. She married her husband, Don Arquette. They currently live in Sarasota, Florida, and have five children. Now, talking about the influence that she had on writing this book. Unlike the story, Killing Mr. Griffin, Mr. Griffin, the story, is an unlikable teacher. He, he demands perfect work, and the students don't like that. That's why they plan to kidnap him, take him up to the mountains, and he end up dying. Unlike the book, um, Lois Duncan had likable teachers as a young adult. Mr. Griffin was based off the teachers, one of the teachers her daughter had. The teacher demanded perfect work like Mr. Griffin, but her daughter benefited from her. Lois Duncan talked about how her daughter still to this day visits her old teacher that demanded perfect work and thanks her for what for what he did for her. That is that connects with the book because Susan McConnell said at the end of the book that she is thankful for what Mr. Griffin did to them because she became a better writer and she was thankful for the hard work and discipline they put on her. Mark Kenny is inspired by people like Ted Bundy and Charles Manson. Lois Duncan says they did what they did with no guilt and went on with their day like a normal person. Lois Duncan's friend, Ann Rule, who also wrote books, had a desk right next to Ted Bundy, and she said he was a very nice person and was shocked to find out he was a serial killer. Lois Duncan thought all serial killers were in high school at some point, meaning they weren't deadly killers. That's how she based the character of Mark Kenny off of what a serial killer would have been in high school. She used Mark Kenny as an example of this to show the the teen thriller action. Mark Kenny basically killed Mr. Griffin and tries covering it up by telling her telling his friends to spread a lie and try to cover it up by many things that he created. This ends up being karma for Mark Kenny because he tries killing one of the friends that was involved with the kidnapping, and Mr. Griffin's wife and a detective come to the house, and they find Mark Kenny almost burning her alive, but he gets arrested, and we don't know what happened after that, because that's when the book ends. This po this episode of the podcast was stated about, about the author. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.